Nowadays, it seems that everyone on the internet is trying to tell you that you need tons of expensive equipment and gear before you can even hit record. So it's no wonder why so many people are put off when it comes to starting a YouTube channel to share their music and creativity online. But what if I told you it was much more simple than that? And what if I told you that you're only a few pieces of gear away from creating the best videos that you can possibly imagine? In this video, I'll go over what you really need to start posting your songs online, including what I use as well as my top tips when it comes to choosing which gear and brand you go for. Well, further ado, let's get to it. So for the first piece of gear that you'll need, you're obviously going to need some sort of instrument. Now there's not too much that I have to say about this one, but I'll briefly touch on a few points. Now firstly, because you are going to be recording with it, it needs to produce a somewhat decent sound, that being because it's set up correctly and it's of a decent quality. Another thing that you might want to think about is what style of instrument you have. Um, for instance, using the example of a guitar, do you have an acoustic or do you go for an electric? Now whilst it won't make a huge difference whichever style you choose, it will determine the methods that you use to record your audio. Now, I don't know too much about recording with an electric guitar, but if you are using an acoustic guitar, you can check out my next video in the series where I go over my own process when it comes to recording the audio. And then whilst you're there, you can also check out my seven top tips for recording without messing up, and this is applicable for all instruments. Now, the next pretty obvious thing that you'll need if you want to film yourself playing your music, you'll need some sort of camera. Now, this really does not need to be anything fancy, and I even use my phone up until a few months ago. This is because whilst more expensive equipment can lead to a better product, ultimately the quality of your videos will come down to your skills as a filmmaker. For instance, factors such as the lighting or the composition of the frame and also the post colour grading of the shot. So when it comes to the camera, the truth is that even a mobile phone will produce really good results and that if you're starting out, I would recommend sticking with something simple like a phone rather than perhaps overwhelming yourself with a more complex complex camera. Although with that being said, if you are curious to what I personally use, I use the Sony RX100 M7 camera and I think it's considered to be one of the best point and shoot cameras. So if you are wanting to upgrade, I think it would be a really good camera to start out with. Moving on to essential gear number three, we have your mic. Now again, if you are a complete beginner and you're only posting on YouTube to keep track of and share your progress, then a phone mic might be perfectly fine. Now one thing to think about is that a key advantage of having a mic is that it's separate to the camera and this means that whilst you could have the camera far away you can keep the mic close to you and your instrument for a good audio. However I found that this problem can be solved by recording the audio and then the video separately so perhaps first you record the audio with your mic or your phone placed optimally like in some sort of room or just a studio type thing so it's where you want it for the best audio possible and then after you can go and film the video without having to worry about the audio because you've already got that. Then later on in the editing process, you can just put these two together. And again, if you want to know how I do this, check out my next video in the series where I go over just that. Still, if this does sound a little bit complicated, if you're brand new to filming, then you can buy like a 20 pound mic or less. And this kind of acts as an extension to your camera, meaning that you can record the audio from a smaller distance because the mic can be closer than where the camera is. If however you are a little more experienced and you're wondering what sort of mic to buy, you might want to consider getting a USB mic such as my Rode NT-USB. And these are great because they just plug straight into whichever device you're using to record. This way you won't need an audio interface to convert the signal into audio because it just does it itself. But perhaps if you are pretty advanced then maybe an analog or a normal mic might be the best option because this can give you more control when it comes to the sound especially if you're using multiple instruments. Now that we have the three main pieces of equipment that you need in order to start a music YouTube channel, the instruments, the camera and the mic, I'll quickly go over some of the extra gear that I use which you might also find useful. Now to start off, unless you have a really keen and dedicated friend, then you need some sort of tripod. And personally the tripod that I use is the Victiv T70. I know it sounds like some sort of Harry Potter broomstick, but I find this is really great and it's a good quality for about £30 I think, so if you wanted to check it out, you can, and I'll link all of the gear in the description. I don't get any money for it, but it's just if you want to 
easily get to what I recommend. Now, the second thing that you will need, and probably stating the obvious, if you are using a camera, you'll need camera batteries and an SD card. And obviously you won't have to worry about this if you're just using your phone. And third thing, you may also need some wires or adapters. For instance, I use a USB to USB-C little adapter thing so I can plug my USB mic into my phone. And I also have this cool little tool which allows me to convert and connect all sorts of things such as my SD card when I'm importing files into my laptop. So I just put it in the thing and then it goes into my laptop. Now, secondary gear number four, you'll need some sort of device to edit your videos on, like a phone or a computer or a laptop. And if you're watching this video, you clearly have at least one of those. So that's that checked off the list. Now, the last thing that I can think of is you might want some sort of headphones. Um, this just gives you slightly better sound quality for when you are editing the audio, so you can make slightly better choices to what will actually improve the quality of the sound. However, this is just a complete complete bonus and even I tend to just use my external devices speakers but it might be useful if you're editing in public so that everyone doesn't hear what you're editing. Lastly, we'll take a quick look at which softwares I use, which are all free if you're looking for any recommendations. To start off with editing the audio, I do and have always used Audacity, which is a little bit old school, but it provides a whole load of tools such as equalizer, reverb, bass and treble boost, noise reduction, Wah, wah. <laughs> now, of course, it's not essential that you do edit your audio, but it can just help to get a better sound, especially if you're using a cheaper mic. Now, when it comes to editing the video, I started off for a little while using just this Movie Maker app on my phone just to put the clips together, but would not recommend. Then a few months later, I upgraded to OpenShot and this is on the computer and it introduced me to the idea of cutting to different angles as well as removing audio or video from different tracks. Still, this was a little bit basic, but really good for a beginner. But once I had more experience, I quickly switched to DaVinci Resolve and this is what I use now. And it gives me far more options than OpenShot ever did, but it's just more designed for filmmakers to edit quickly and efficiently and of course, it provides so many more tools like color grading. Finally, to quickly mention a few of the sites that I use to make my thumbnails, I used to just use Lumi, which is actually pretty good. It's just an app on the phone, as well as Covermaker, another app on the phone. And I use Lumi, I still use Lumi, but I use other things now as well. But Lumi basically allows you to color grade the photo, like changing the lightness, darkness, exposure, background, saturation, you name it. And then Covermaker can put text on the image, which is good for a thumb. Recently though, I have been experimenting with a few new tools. For instance, sometimes I might just use DaVinci Resolve while I edit my video on, and then I'll just take a screenshot of the clip where I have my thumbnail. And I've also experimented recently with Canva and Adobe Express, and these are pretty similar. And again, all just the free versions, but these once again, give me some more tools such as background remover, which is always fun and allows me to put images on, uh, maybe cut out my lovely little face. <laughs> and put it in the bin um, and it also gives me text which is more aesthetic generally um, because it has different fonts rather than you know just the standard ones that you get on an app so as you can see whilst at first it may seem like you need thousands of pounds worth of expensive equipment in order to create quality videos the truth is you probably already have access to most of what you need and that which you don't have can easily be filled in at a decently low cost or even a zero cost so hopefully you found this video useful and it really does go to show that no matter what gear you have you can still put your music out there and make amazing progress and if you are interested you can go back to some of my older videos when I was using a much more minimal setup to see what you can actually achieve with almost nothing and if you wanted to watch a few more of my videos you can also just track my progress as a creator and how my videos evolved as I gained new tools and most importantly new skills you can find these songs linked in the description in a playlist now it's one thing having all of these things but if you don't know how to use them then what's the point point? and that's why I've made a part two to this episode where I take a deep dive in how I film my videos and record my audio. I'll see you there. Cool! Ah, my little toes, my little toes. My
Oh, the truth is that even a mobile phone. Ev <laughs> the truth is that even a mobile phone. <laughs> the truth is that a mobile phone. Why can't I say phone? <laughs> no, shut up. Sorry, Siri. And obviously, you won't have to worry about this. Ah! I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Oh, my bum cheek. Definitely landed. <laughs>